My 28 female ex-boyfriend Mark has a girlfriend Janet, 32. Janet isn't very family oriented and hates kids, which is ironic because Mark and I have a daughter Cora, tween. Recently a situation arose where Janet tried to punish Cora by locking her out of the house at night. We all live around forests so anything could have happened to her. Cora called me and I ended up picking her up and calling Mark because Janet wasn't answering the door. I called Mark and told him what happened and he told me to at least listen to Janet's side of the story. I told him I didn't care about her side because no behaviour could allow an adult to lock a kid out of the house. It's honestly appalling to me. I found out the full story and my opinion still didn't change. So Cora only wanted to clean up the mess that she made in her room because that's the only place she really is in their house. She refused to clean Janet's mess and Janet punished her. I talked to my daughter about how she would feel if I were to file for full custody and she said she didn't care as long as she wasn't around Janet. I told Mark that I was filing for full and he told his mom and she started texting me on Facebook super angry. Apparently Mark and Janet told a different story than what happened and excluded the locking out of the house part to make me and Cora look bad. I ended up telling Mark's mom and she apologised, but from what I was told, she told Mark that he was a horrible father and wouldn't talk to him if he decided to continue the relationship between him and Janet. Mark is now saying that I'm a bad person and a bad mom, my sister thinks I went too far, and the situation could have been talked about. So, am I the idiot for going to file for full custody because of a situation about my ex's girlfriend? So, she locked her out because Cora didn't want to clean up after Janet. Wow. Not the idiot, OP. She locked your child out of the house. That is not appropriate at all, but especially not as a punishment. Janet did something that endangered your child, and she knew it was unreasonable, which is why she and Mark are lying to everyone. Good for you for protecting your kid, and your daughter's grandmother is a good one. And if Mark has partial custody and his girlfriend locked his child out of the house and he allowed it, I'd have called CPS and cops on both of them then they'd have been criminally charged if anything happened to your child. As someone literally old enough to be your mom, I am so sorry because that must have been genuinely terrifying for Cora and horrible for you to hear as a mum. You don't need to like Janet or even get along with her or Mark, but you absolutely have a right to know that she's safe when Cora is at their home. Any father who would allow someone to lock their daughter out of the house for any reason isn't a good father. You're right to file for sole custody. This is a safety issue. Good luck with getting full custody, and I hope your daughter never has to see that woman again. Everyone's the idiot here. Neither of you is effectively co-parenting. I want to hear Janet's side too. There are certain situations in which I could see that be the consequence of a kid's action, although it would have to be a very extreme case. It sounds like you already were predisposed to create trouble rather than co-parent. Maybe you're not over your ex. You may instill in your daughter a sense of entitlement and lack of accountability that will carry over into every other aspect of her life. However, since you didn't offer any clarity on Janet's side, I have to assume she deserves the benefit of the doubt. Update? I just want to set some things straight. I don't have any feelings for Mark at all. We dated and broke a long time ago. Second, I don't want to make it seem like I'm hiding Janet's side of the story, but there's nothing more to it. Cora only cleaned up the mess that she made in the house and not Janet's mess. Mark refuses to break up with Janet. My lawyer said it would probably take a few weeks to get custody. Mark wants Janet and Cora to do therapy together. I asked Cora if she would be interested in doing that and she said no. Cora has declined Mark's attempts to get her and Janet to talk. Mark hasn't even tried to see her alone, only trying to get her and Janet. As far as I know, Mark's mom isn't talking to Mark, not by my request. That's honestly all there is for now. I'm not close with my brother Matt. Our parents heavily favoured him growing up, which caused him to be a selfish adult now. Matt doesn't talk to us unless he needs something. His wife, Amber, is even worse. I've done my best to be civil with Amber, but she is a nasty person. The first thing she did when we met was insulted my then toddler daughter's hair. Amber behaves this way to every member of the family. The only reason the family speaks to Matt or Amber anymore is that we don't want to deprive the kids of a relationship with their cousins, as they all love each other. We keep things superficial because they know I leave with my daughter if Matt or Amber says something rude. My friend texted me asking, isn't this your sister-in-law? And sent me a link to a beautiful child contest on Facebook. Amber's young daughter, Mia, was the winner. 
Amber photoshopped the picture so much that it barely resembled her daughter. Amber had made Mia's brown eyes blue and her chestnut hair blonde. Amber re-sculpted Mia's face. She looked like another kid. I looked on Amber's social media and saw she did this with all her photos of her kids, including her infant son, Jacob. Jacob is a cute baby. He has dark eyes, hair, and tan skin like Matt. Amber photoshopped Jacob's eyes a bluish green. She's made his skin lighter and his hair auburn. Matt had the same edited photos posted on his social media, so he clearly had no problem with it. I was disgusted that they felt the need to photoshop pictures of their toddler and baby. The grandparents insisted on taking everyone shopping at the mall for new clothes. After shopping, we got lunch together while the kids went to play on the mini rides and arcade games. I took a picture of the kids and Matt and Amber asked me to send it to them. Amber was examining the picture and commented that my daughter Savannah's eyebrows were too bushy and there was a threading place near my house where I should take her to shape her eyebrows better. In the same sentence, she commented about Savannah's cheeks having too much baby fat and that I should consider a children's workout class for her. I was furious with Amber because who the heck does she think she is to insult a kid's appearance? I told her that Savannah is perfect the way she is and who the heck is she to comment otherwise? Amber got defensive and said how she's just trying to offer helpful criticism because Savannah will have trouble finding a boyfriend if she doesn't learn to maintain herself. I said Savannah would find someone who loves her, not her looks, instead of being so shallow and insecure that she photoshops her kids' pictures online. Amber and Matt looked extremely angry and embarrassed. I told Savannah it was time to go and we left. People say I should have left immediately instead of causing drama and responding to Amber how I did, but nobody insults my child and gets away with it. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Photoshopping your children is literally Kardashian-level crazy. Not only is it a vapid, shallow thing to do, but imagine those poor children's self-esteem when they eventually find photos of themselves that mommy photoshopped. Amber was absolutely out of line making comments about your minor child's appearance. Based on what you've said here, Amber sounds like an adult who didn't emotionally mature beyond her teenage years. She clearly holds all of her value in how she and those around her look and lacks so much self-esteem that she needs to knock children down a peg to make herself feel better. It's quite sad and pitiful, really. Agree, the child is a tween. A tween. Her biggest concern should be riding her bike and playing with her friends, not maintenance. People like this are disgusting. Amber shouldn't be a mother. I see years of therapy in her children's future. Her daughter will grow up believing her only value is in her looks and whether she can hang on to a man or not. I honestly don't see it worth the effort to keep a relationship with them just because your kids can have a relationship with their cousins. Those kids will have terrible mental health issues if they think beauty is all that matters, like your sister-in-law. They will become nasty like them too. My sister has been dating this guy Josh for around seven years now with seemingly no intent to get married. My sister believes marriage is a scam, doesn't desire it at all, and is fine with just being a girlfriend to her boyfriend. Multiple times, my parents and I have tried explaining to her that getting married is not just about wearing a wedding dress and all, and that there are legal advantages and perks that she won't be able to have if she's unmarried. She said there are solutions and marriage is neither a wish for her nor Josh. We are deeply conservative and religious and take marriage seriously. So when I had my wedding a few months ago, I didn't invite Josh because he's not officially tied to my sister. I told her she could have her views on marriage and I can have mine. And if she wants me to respect her decisions and views, she has to respect mine too. And I'm uncomfortable with inviting couples who are neither engaged nor married to my wedding. She held it against us for all these months, only attended the ceremony, stayed at the reception for half an hour and then left so she was basically absent from my wedding. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, she got into an accident and was hospitalized for a few days. The hospital has a strict close relatives only policy, and basically only my parents could visit my sister as first degree relatives. So Josh couldn't see her, and he was mad they wouldn't allow him. She was out of the hospital soon after with no serious injuries, but I used what happened as an opportunity to teach my sister why her being a little girlfriend is way different from being a wife. If she and Josh were married, he wouldn't have missed out on visiting her in the hospital, so his lack of visitation is their fault. My sister now believes I'm the idiot for using her accident to teach her a lesson, but I don't believe I am since maybe this could be a wake-up call for both of them. 
You are the idiot. You became the idiot the second you started punishing her for her opinion. I have never heard of someone requiring couples at a wedding to be engaged or married. Ever. And I'm square in the heart of the Bible Belt where they teach abstinence in school with a straight face. But you're right that being married offers important legal advantages and it's not just about tradition, but excluding her longtime boyfriend from your wedding and lecturing her after a serious accident that put her in the hospital? You suck. And honestly, you're a case study in how religious conservatives manage to miss the point of Christian teaching. You've decided to hurt someone who should be a close friend and partner because she didn't follow the letter of the law as you see it. I'd recommend reading about the Pharisees and taking a good long look in the mirror. Hospitals respect common law relationships as being a close family. However, the family obviously made it clear to hospital staff that he was not to be included, which is just sickening. My SO and I have been together for almost 10 years. Never once has he been turned away at the hospital while I was there for not being legally married. The family prevented him from visiting, not the hospital. Terrible. OP, you are wrong on so many levels. First, her relationship is none of your business, and your methods of forcing them together into marriage might end in no contact with her. Worry about your own relationship and stay out of other people's. And yes, using an emergency situation to shove your ideals down someone's throat is absolutely idiot behavior. Hands down. So, I'm a white woman, 21, who lives in the southern US. I took an interest in foreign languages in high school because it seemed important. I speak Spanish and English fluently since those are the two most spoken languages in the US, and it seemed important to learn Spanish. I also speak Chinese well, but not as well as a native speaker. Anywho, my brother has been dating this girl Luisa for several months. He'd mentioned her family is from Mexico. They've moved in together recently and through a housewarming party. It's worth noting that my brother's best friend is Hispanic, and his family is from Cuba. My brother speaks a bit of Spanish, he can follow conversations decently and knows his fair amount of insults. When I got to the party, I started chatting with my brother's best friend and we were conversing in Spanish. We've just done it for years, we primarily talk in Spanish because use it or lose it and all that. My brother and his girlfriend came over and I said it's nice to meet you and I included them in what we were talking about. All of this was in Spanish. His girlfriend is named Luisa and her family is from Mexico. I'd heard her speaking English with a bit of an accent when I came in, so I incorrectly assumed she spoke Spanish. She kind of went off on me about how not everyone speaks Spanish, and that as a white girl, I don't need to be speaking it. My brother later apologized and said it was a sore spot for her. But it's been on my mind. Am I the idiot for assuming she speaks Spanish when she doesn't and speaking Spanish in front of her? Edit. I did try to apologize for assuming, but she kept yelling at me and then ran off to the other side of the room and went to badmouth me to her friends. There are a lot of white people in Spain. They speak, um, Spanish. You are not the idiot, OP. Just speak to her in Chinese from now on. As a white girl, I don't need to be speaking it. This is one of the most stupid things I've ever heard. Yet she should go to Spain, Argentina, Uruguay, etc. And she'll be shocked to see white people, even blondes and blue-eyed, all of them speaking Spanish. And anyway, why couldn't a white, non-Spanish person speak Spanish or any other language? That's rude and moronic as heck. Speaking Spanish is a skill. Anyone can learn it when they have the desire to. It's not strictly only for Mexicans and non-whites. She's most likely ashamed that she didn't learn to speak it and misplaced that anger on you with cheap shots that a white girl shouldn't be speaking the language. I think this is the core. But empathy goes a long way. When you get a chance to talk to her again, you'll get a chance to explain and maybe even make a friend. So just cut her some slack. Your brother loves her and maybe don't do the whole Spanish thing around her for now. I'm a woman whose 30th birthday is approaching. Here, that birthday is an important one, so I want to do something special. My boyfriend is 29 and we've been dating for three years. We've yet to spend my birthday together as his younger brother shares the same birthday. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. I've made it clear I want to do something for my birthday, but he insists he has to go to his family as it'll be his brother's 25th. He told me to come with him and we'd make it a shared thing, but I refused as I knew if I went to his family during his brother's birthday, it would not be shared. I refused. I ended up planning my birthday. I've booked a week-long vacation to Dubai and will stay in an underwater suite in Atlantis the Palm. 
I've made it clear if he wants to come along, that's fine, but I'll be taking my friend if he doesn't come. He's upset with me as I've planned such a great holiday, knowing he won't be able to go, and how I could have booked this for another date, telling me it didn't need to be on the actual date. I'm just tired of doing nothing on my birthday with my boyfriend. I've been understanding, but this is special, so I don't think it's unreasonable to want to do something memorable on the day and not share it. He thinks I'm being selfish and spoiled. I can understand if I was a new girlfriend wanting to spend it with his brother, but we've been dating for some time. I don't think I'm asking for much here. Am I in the wrong? Not the idiot. Why have you had to give up every birthday to his brother? I've never heard of a spouse doing that until your story. You're not being spoiled. He's being neglectful. It's going to be like this for the whole relationship and bro is five years younger, so literally every big milestone he will have one too, but at five-year intervals. When it's her 35th, it'll be his 30th, so don't expect your boyfriend there. Same for her 45th. Why is she with him? I would completely understand if these were high school kids and the boyfriend's brother was 12, but these are grown adults in a long-term relationship. At what point is this man ever going to prioritize the OP over his adult brother? She should cut her losses, have a great birthday with her friend, and find someone who puts her first. What an idiot. He sounds very me, me, me. He doesn't care about your birthday. But oh no, you planned a cool trip and he likes to go on cool trips. So it'd be much more convenient if you just sat alone and bored on your birthday while he celebrates his brothers and then plan the trip when he wants to come. Got to wonder what he's hoping OP will do for him and his family for his big 30. Personally, I think she should tell him to pack and move in with bro to add to her birthday present. Exactly three years and he still treats you like you aren't a priority in his life? Is that what you want in this relationship? If you don't come first after three years, then I doubt you ever will. So go have fun on your trip and don't feel guilty about it.